Gadget reboot is trapped in an Arduino. Good morning. The time is 3 o'clock a.m. There's an Arduino library called Talky that does speech synthesis similar to one of these TILPC synthesizer chips like in the old Speak and Spell. There's a library on GitHub that hasn't been touched in about seven years from going digital, but it looks like it's been further worked on by this Armin Joe account on GitHub, and they reference some other info about this kind of LPC synthesis. One of the improvements here, the original library only supported a couple of processors, so this one now supports others. So if we look down into the source for this library, if we look in these vocabulary files, this is basically what's going on in here. There's a program memory array of data for each individual sound sample. Usually it's one word at a time, so you can string them together into a sentence. But you have all of this data here that represents the sounds in the LPC format. So if you look in each of these header files, you can see what sounds are available. There's references to things like where the sounds were derived from, what they basically sound like, male or female, and what kind of accent. But you can look through here and see all of these sounds that you can play back in a sketch. Looking at a quick example, getting started, you would include the talkie library, and you would include any of those vocabulary header files that you plan to use, initialize the talkie synthesizer, and in this case, they named it voice. So in the sketch, you reference voice and you say voice.say and then the name of whatever sound sample you want to play. I noticed there's a little bit of a click or pop at the beginning, at least, of each word if you amplify the sound output. But if you use a tiny speaker, it kind of gets lost and it sounds more filtered and smooth. And there's really no schematic. I'm using an Arduino Uno, so I'm connecting a speaker directly between pin 3 and pin 11, and that drives the speaker. So let's look at more about these kind of speech synthesizers and what LPC is all about. Here's the data sheet for one of these synthesizers. So let's just skim through a bunch of info and figure out maybe what's going on, at least to some degree. So if we look at device operation, Speech data, which would be the data in those program memory arrays we looked at, that data has been compressed or encoded using LPC, linear predictive coding, and when that data is fed into this chip or the Arduino talkie library, it will decode the data and construct a digital filter model of a person's vocal tract. So they're emulating a human voice using filtering and taking LPC data to make this vocal tract talk. A rough idea of how the human voice makes sound. The lungs produce an airflow source, vibrating vocal cords. That creates audible pulses forming a sound source. And throughout the rest of the vocal system, sounds are shaped and filtered. Then you get the final sound out of the voice. Looking at LPC, linear predictive coding, LPC works based on modeling the vocal tract as if the throat and mouth form a tube with characteristic resonances, and this leads to enhanced frequency bands in the sound that's produced, which they refer to as formants. Hisses and pops are also generated through this whole vocal generating system and LPC works on this principle in its modeling. The LPC algorithm will evaluate these formants, try to figure out the intensity and frequency, and then that data is what's fed back into the speech synthesizer in an attempt to regenerate the speech. Here's another graphical representation. If the original vocal cord sound is more like pink noise with a lot of different frequencies, and then that sound goes through various filters, which would be various cavities throughout the vocal tract. You end up filtering this original sound and getting these formants, and that determines what sound comes out of the voice in the end. Trying to put that into further perspective here, there's a table that shows the first three formant frequencies for a bunch of common English vowels from an adult male. 
So an E sound, as in leap, would involve formant frequencies of 270 Hz, 2300 Hz, and 3 kHz. And with just these frequencies and some filtering, you can create passable imitations of these vowel sounds. Your ears can differentiate one vowel from another with only the first three formants present. So here's a little example. You can make a synthesizer say E if you have some sort of oscillator, some filters with various cutoff frequencies, mix those together, and that's the sound you get. In this talky library, there's some example sounds that are actually phrases, not just single words, because it's just a sequence of sounds that are encoded with this LPC method, and the program memory for that sentence is all of this. So if you want to do your own, the info in this library includes how to create your own LPC data. So since I have a Mac available, this Blue Wizard is one tool that can be used. And Blue Wizard is on GitHub. So in the build folder, there's a disk image. And when I mounted this, then when I loaded this, I could access the application. And when you run it, you get a screen like this. And here's mine running right here. I've already loaded a file, but up in the file menu, if you open a 16-bit 8 kilohertz sample rate WAV file, that's one of the menu options, it will load right here. It will encode it in LPC. It will show you here what it sounds like encoded, and here is all the data. So all you have to do is select all, and then copy, and you throw that into a sketch right here. So you just create your own custom new variable, same setup as this, and then all the data comes here, and then you can just play this back, and you have a custom sound. I wanted to do a test, so I recorded something simple in Audacity, and then immediately it encoded it, gave me this data, and I can play a sample here of what it should sound like. Aruga. Aruga. Of course, I can hear its lower quality. So just to make sure the WAV file is in the correct format, there's this spammy looking website. So you click here and upload a WAV file. And then I made sure it said 16-bit and 8 kilohertz. And I didn't change anything else. And then start conversion. And it will let you download that WAV file. So this is the way I have this all set up. I had to make sure I clicked to include the prefix 0x in front of all this data. For that program memory array, it has to look like this. And I did two sound samples, and both of them came out weird. At the end of it, there is all this digitized noise kind of stuff, but just to get started for fun, maybe there's a setting I can change. So my setup is the same as this, basically, a speaker directly on pin 3 and pin 11, and that's it. There's this demo, they have sketches that use a potentiometer, but I don't. And here's the sketch that I ended up coming up with. So I created these brand new samples called Sample 1 and Sample 2. And here's the program memory copied out of that other tool. It goes on as long as it needs to for the sample. And looking through those header files like we did earlier to see what words are available already, I decided to include these three headers and my own two sound samples. There's really nothing to do in the setup, and all I do in the main loop is just play each sample that I want to play. So I played my two custom ones, and then I constructed some sentences with these other things that already exist, and that's it. It will just keep looping. I made note here, just for reference, what I'm using to compile, and that I'm on an UNO, and this one takes 25% of program space and 7% of dynamic memory. So if you only need a couple of words or something in a sketch, this is a very feasible option for getting sound generated. So let's see what this ended up sounding like. Gadget reboot is trapped in an Arduino. Good morning. The time is 3 o'clock a.m. Cassette data era. Danger, danger, red, alert, instrument striking down, visibility obscured, repair, machine, check, 10, micro, ferret, 4, kilo, ohms, 12, milli, henry. If you found that interesting and think you may even have a use for something like this in a project, give this video a thumbs up.
consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this in the future, and I'll see you on the next video.